I would like to say that I have the possibility to meet uh, Dr. Yu in the, at the University of Pekin. We have invited him to come here. We didn't know it was uh, going to be so soon. So we are very happy you are here with us. Uh, there's a great expectation in the community to know about uh, the way you work, the methods you, you use, and to speak about Sponge City and all the methodology that's, uh, that has been part of your research and that can be uh, uh, that uh, all around the world has been uh, introduced to everybody through, through your books and particularly through the magazine that you have at the University of, of Beijing and of the project that's uh, here, Turnscape, for everybody, para cualquiera que lo quiera conocer, aquí está la información on Turnscape, that's uh, the office at the University of Beijing, the research and the, and the practical office that uh, Dr. Yu has in Beijing. So, Welcome to Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are the controller. Controller. So, we are so it, is, it is my greatest honor to be invited to share my uh, experience, uh, is a, which I have done is a, I accumulated in the past uh, 20 years. I came to Mexico City in uh, 2006. Actually, I drove, I drove all the way from Cancun. I spent a week, a whole week, run through the jungle and come to Mexico City. So I, it's really, I love this country, I love the culture. And even love the color, the same color, the Chinese color, <laughs> red color. You will see, I uh, using my uh, uh, project. Uh, this, is it on? Yeah. So we share a lot. We share a lot of things. We have very ancient culture. We have very ancient wisdom, and we also have this uh, 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 respect with nature. To nature. And uh, I think that's a, that's a and even people say uh, we share the same same people actually uh, back a long time ago maybe uh, three thousand years ago uh, two thousand years ago actually people come from Asia mainland China to all the way to Mex uh, Mexican to say, South, South America uh, and, and I did find some clues here we share the same dragon actually the same kind of dragon the water dragon uh, we all know how to deal with the water. We have all kind of uh, similar climate, you know, the dry season, the wet season, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, we share the same food. China live on corn. So corn was introduced to, to China just about 400 years ago, and it it it, it become a, a major support, a, a major food for the for the people to for the Chinese double the population at that time. Uh, so that's I think. Uh, uh, it's, it is a great honor to come here to, uh, to share uh, what we have done in China, and this can be also uh, be done here. Uh, uh, and you have, uh, as, as, I, as I heard, you have many, many issues about water, pollution, and, uh, and flood and drought. So all my project is about how to deal with these problems, how to meet these challenges. Uh, of, you know, flood. That's why I define my own profession, landscape architecture, as the art of survival. Yeah, it's not art of ornament. Yeah, it's art of survival. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it not ready? I mean, <laughs> the controller, where's the controller? Okay, where, where's the controller? Uh, I mean, slight controller. <laughs> so, so my my topic will be the deep four, the deep four and deep connections. Yeah. So slide. Yes, yeah, controller. I mean, huh? Uh, next, uh, next. I saw that you have controller. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, sir. Thank you. And, and maybe this light? Yeah, the light on. Turn off the, turn off the light. Yes. <laughs> so people might think we are connected today. We have, we have cell phone, we have our high line, we have all these highways. We are connected. Right? But such a connection is actually very shallow. There's a, there's, there's a movie called Beautiful Mind. There's an American movie, Beautiful Mind. And there's a word that says, you know, the relationship even between man and woman becomes such a simple. There's no, no more deep connection. Right? That's what you can read. <laughs> That's so simple. But we are actually being cut off from the, particularly from the natural system. Now, particularly, between man's daily life with water, with, with natural process. And, and because of this kind of disconnection with nature, we actually have all this problem. So it's an issue of survival. You know? Over 80% of the Chinese cities are suffering air pollution. Over 60% of the Chinese cities are suffering flood every year. And the drought at the same time. I mean, you have the flood and the drought. And 75% of water is polluted. Maybe here it's the same problem. 75% of water is polluted. And it happened at the last. 50% of wetland disappeared in the last 50 years. So these are all the problems. And conventionally, we try to use this. this Solution based on the industrial technology, concrete, pipes, sewage plant, which will solve this problem. But this conventional solution, we call it green infrastructure, are so expensive. They are expensive to maintain, they are expensive to, to construct. You see, China in the past, in the past 40 years, annually, we use over 50% of cement of the world every year, and 30% of steel and energy of the world. And it's quite crazy, such a kind of uh, shallow form landscape. There's no deep connection uh, with, with nature. That's why we need a kind of revolution. This revolution is to recover it's a big connection with nature, which I call big feet revolution. As against the little feet, gentrified, uh, 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 little feet kind of uh, uh, aesthetics, values. Yeah? Big feet, we need to be healthy, we need to be productive, and uh, you see that the, uh, and even lost it, but they are healthy. It's healthy. That's a little feet. For over 2,000 years, Chinese uh, 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 high elite, elite culture values this kind of culture. Little feet, pink, pale, white face, narrow, uh, uh, rest, unhealthy. And these healthy people, but we ignore it. We don't trust it. Uh, we, don't, uh, we think this is the lost it. This is not testable. Yeah. Nature-based solution is what I mean, a big fit. A big fit. Healthy, productive, high performance, low maintenance. So that's create deep form. That's deep form versus a shallow form. The deep form is human, is mean, means human desire is built upon nature system, based on nature, based on ecological process. While the shallow form have to maintain. It's not high performance, it's low performance, and have to maintain with energy, with water, with high uh, labor cost. And this ship, this shallow form can be at a national scale. Look at the, the, the Chinese urbanization. 
75%, of the population today, particularly in the past 40 years, are concentrated in this delta area, in the river basin. And they are all under the risk of flood, 70%. And 70% of GDP is produced in this flood risky area. So that's a kind of unrelated with nature. Right? We are conflicting nature in order to create so-called life in so-called development. So timeless interdependence of human nature and human nature has built up the deepest bond between present and the farmland. Therefore, the creation of deep form can be inspired by the wisdom of peasantry, irrigation, cultivation, field making, all, and fertilizing, even fertilizing. So all these create a deep connection to the nature. You know, you know that's, but today we have wiped out all these kind of deep connections. As here. Yeah. For the over past 20 years, my firm and, uh, and my university, we have tested this kind of deep form based on nature's wisdom, based on inspired by the ancient wisdom, create over 500 projects in over 200 cities, global-wise, but mainly in China, in all cities like Shanghai, Beijing, and everywhere in China, almost. Yeah. Uh, that's the distribution of our project nationwide. And we have now uh, about 600 professionals in my firm at Twitstate practicing nationwide, yeah. including the idea of Sponge City. But the Sponge City is just one of these deep four, the deep, deep connection between nature and culture. So there's two levels of deep four to create deep form two strategies. The first is planning, regional planning, national planning, and, and urban planning based on natural process. That's the, I call to create a configurative deep form. The relationship, the pattern between nature and the culture. That's the planning. Where is the boundary? Where is the line which nature and uh, uh, which is separate nature and culture, which human beings should never go across, uh, should give back to nature. And the second strategy is to design and create a transformative, which is overlaid. Here, you will see the campus is well designed because it's overlapping the, the lava storm. You cannot divide between nature and culture. So this is transformative. So there's two strategies, transformative and uh, configurative. So this is the largest scale configurative design, the national landscape. Where is nature, where is culture? And all the way from regional to community scale. All about the relationship between nature and uh, culture. For example, water. That's in, in China. We have uh, uh, all the river system, including Yangtze River. But when I, I, I did a, a research back in uh, 2007 with my student at the Beijing University, it, turned out, it turns out that water only needs 0.8% of the land, which means give water more space is, is, is affordable. Water didn't take much time, uh, they didn't take much space. Water only needed this percentage of its life. But a human being I just cannot, just don't want to give water space. So we channelize the whole river. It's so all river being channelized. And, but, but the flood didn't stop. Every year we have flood. So we have to spend billions of dollars every year to build the concrete wall, try to stop. So flood. But imagine we only protect 0.80% of 
of, of life. So just so the question we raise, why don't we give water the whole area? Yeah? They only need such a little space. Why bother to spend so much money, so much investment, create high dikes, high dams to protect the city from being flooded? Uh, and uh, yet, we always make mistakes. And we always build over the water, build over, take over the, the, the flood plan. That's the cause of today's problem. And that's why the, the biggest project I did is to define where nature should be protected. I call it national ecological security pattern. To secure the minimum area of nature so that nature can provide enough ecosystem services to the society, to the city, including regulation, including production, provision of clean, and, uh, clean air and water, food, and also sustain life, biodiversity, and also can be beautiful. And cities can be built like that. Instead of taking water space, we can just avoid taking those sensitive ecological space. That's the development should be based. And at a regional scale, this is Beijing. Beijing expanded five times, five times in just, as I mean, just 20, about more than 20 years, you can see, exploring. So it used up all the water, all the groundwater. The groundwater dropped two meters every year. Two meters every year, you can imagine. Similar situation, of, of course, here, yeah. Uh, but, but at the same time, you can so all river dry out, but the flood at the same time. Right? River flooded, but at the same time, the river dry. The so street become river, and the river become dry, uh, dry out. So, and groundwater drop. But when, when we did this history, these are the floodable area. It's a history. When you look at it, so imagine, if you leave this space alone, the city will be safe, right? The city will be safe. If you leave this space to green, to nature, water and, and the city will be in harmony. So these are called the flood security pattern. Now, history will tell us the future. So this place will be floodable in the future. And the integrating with water, we can also integrate with habitat, biodiversity, cultural heritage, and green infrastructure, other green infrastructure like pedestrian, bicycle lanes. Together, we create we call regional ecological infrastructure. That will protect the security of the city from being flooded and also gives the people opportunity for recreation and also give biodiversity enough space. So all together, this we call green infrastructure. That will provide all kind of ecosystem services and also makes the city beautiful, economically viable also. So instead of exploring based on green infrastructure, the city should be built, integrated to create a configurative pattern between nature. So that's the deep form, the form of urbanism based on the ecological infrastructure. At the medium scale, a city of 10 square kilometers, that's the site, that's the GIS modeling of the site. Look at the blue area. Now those blue areas are pond, a pond system. They were created by farmers back thousands of years ago because they need to cultivate the land, they need to irrigate the rice paddy. During the monsoon season, they will collect the water in the pond. And during the dry season, they use the water to irrigate the field. But today, the, 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 the modern way of city building is leveling the ground, filling out the pond make a flat line and depend on pipelines 
to drain away all the storm water. But the pipes are made of steel and, and concrete. They are simply not resilient. They cannot be, you know, they cannot expand. So if you have, if you have climate change, the city will be flooded. Right? So that why why don't we keep this we call it the sponge? This is sponge, not all, they are they are they are the natural sponge, but actually cultural. They are cultural heritage. They have been created by our peoples back thousands of years ago. And this can be integrated into other ecological facilities, including pedestrian bikeways and also urban parks to create a called urban level green infrastructure. And now this green infrastructure will lead to urban development. So I call it a negative approach, which means design or plan this green infrastructure first before any kind of urban development or any kind of cultural intervention. So that's create a city. The city will be nature-based, will be based on ecological infrastructure. There will be no drainage pipes. You don't need a drainage pipe to drain away the water. You just keep the water on the ground. Because for over thousands of years, water and the land already balanced based on this sponge system. Yeah? So we developed this mass plan, you can see all the drainage were based on green uh, landscape. No drainage pipe. The water can be on the street. These are residential, the back lanes. And that is rendering 10 years ago. That is rendering 10 years ago. And it's built today. You can see uh, water flood, that's monsoon season flood. But inside, it's all have a very uh, a, a natural based system. It's water running through and being cleansed by the nature, by green inf uh, infrastructure. And the water downstream will not be polluted as a coil based on. Uh, so that's uh, uh, I call at this medium scale to build the city based on green infrastructure. So you can save a lot of money, you can save 15% of investment without building the pipes and separate the sewage from the storm water. And the storm water management will totally depend on this we call the sponge, the green sponge. The second strategy is about design. Now how can you make the big feet, this nature big feet beautiful at the same time when it is functional as a, as a sponge? So that make me compare, you know, this is a European building, you look at it, in, in, in Italy. You cannot separate nature from culture. Like this campus, right? it's integrated, it's overlapped. So it's a transformative. It's not a configurative. It's dripping over, it's dripping over. The culture dripping over nature. Like here also, the terraces is a cultural, but actually it's based on nature. The culture dripping off of nature, you create deep form. This is deep form. In South America, you have miles, thousands of miles of these kind of terraces before. Yeah, I traveled all the way to uh, Peru, you will see the terraces. The terraces is the wisdom of a storm water management, actually. It's an adaptation to the monsoon climate. You will not see it in, 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 in Europe, you will not see it in, in England, yeah? because they are. So the so weather there is very now. You don't have to keep water. The water comes from the sky. But here, you have to develop this cultural wisdom to deal with water. And uh, what I do is, in the past 20 years, we inspired by, by this very ancient cultural wisdom to create model for engineering, to design it, and to test it, how this can work for today's urban situation, and then make them liberable. Make them liberable because we can use a machine to do it today at a, at a fast, at a massive scale, and more efficiently. And use this module 
replicable module to do to transform today's concrete landscape, today's urban gray infrastructure into green infrastructure. For example, the, this is about flood. The first case I want to show you how to deal with flood. Right? This is a great infrastructure. We have seen everywhere the uh, annual investment to, to strengthen this kind of uh, uh, concrete wall. But it's totally cut the nature from culture and totally um, actually unsafe. You know, New Orleans is a good example how this great infrastructure can be can happen, can become a disaster in overnight. Right? Again, against water, similar culture. So this is one example I did uh, two, back in 2003. There was uh, a river uh, being channelized like that. Uh, and uh, in the middle of the project, just one only 50% of the project being finished, the mayor called me. The mayor called me. He cannot go, he cannot finish the project. Why? Because the farmers protest. And the farmers protest. The reason farmers protest is because their buffalo cannot get into the water. The buffalo have no water to drink. Right? You can see. And it is so dangerous also for human beings. People get drawn in the water, in the creek, in the stream, because he cannot climb up to this very steep wall in the flood. So that's Engineer will say this is safe. Yeah. Actually, that's very dangerous. Yeah. So, what should we do? We should remove it. Yeah. So, this is the first project in China, almost in uh, uh, in, South, in, in in hundred years, to remove the concrete instead of uh, building with the concrete to recover the wetland along the river. Yeah. So this is all concrete being removed and being restored. The wetland. Recover this annual flood to live with water, to make a water, to make friends with water, and to take, let nature come back, uh, sharing with nature's uh, process. Uh, because the monsoon climate only comes here very short. The flood only comes here maybe one day, one week. So the rest of the time, people can use it. Uh, but this must be also, of course, must be safe. Safe enough, a safe or more safe, more safer than the concrete. So we did all this analyze based on GIS, the 10-year flood, 20-year flood, and 50-year flood. So we don't bother to, to channelize it. We just leave this space alone and turn this area into productive wetland. Can be rice field, can be lotus pond, and can be park. So this is a park which we created based on this uh, green, uh, based on the natural process, based on the monsoon climate. This was before, this was after. Yeah. You will see the dramatic change. No, most, no, uh, no additional space, by the way, you can see. This space, we just uh, designed with knowledge, designed with uh, wisdom inspired by this uh, ancient, ancient uh, wisdom, you can see. And we have created the interior river. This, this bank will be floodable every five years. And the 20 year, uh, 100 year flood will set back, give nature the space, share with nature, and dramatically will change the landscape. Now, I talk to people here in Mexico City. People will feel, oh, we have we're taking over. We have no space for river. You know, it's narrow, internalized. All the houses are nearby. But actually, we don't need more space. We can solve the problem in other way, uh, such as this kind of uh, design. Make a difference. Make a difference. So this uh, interior, in, inner river, this out river over there. So every day you can use inner river. The so water will run through it and clean, cleans it. This vegetation will allow the dirty water to be cleansed, to filtrate it. Yeah? So it's multifunctional. It's a sponge. A bigger example uh, is in my hometown. 
in Zhejiang province, Jinghua. And the engineer will love this kind of structure, right? It's super strong, right? super strong, uh, standardized, yeah. But terrible, huh? to me, yeah? dangerous, the people also. So they move it, huh? but they move it, set back. That nature coming into the city. And the, that's, the bank can be like that. Not actually, not additional space, but uh, actually the, 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 the back used to be here. We just terrace it, terrace it, create a resilient space for water and for the people. The flood come, so let's just flood it. The, because flood don't need much more space, as I, as I said. Only need 1% of our national land, uh, to, based on my knowledge. So it's flooded, but it's a, we can still allow people to use the city. Uh, so functional is still there. Uh, and when we treat, the flood retreat, the, the space go back to the city, come back to the city. Use the dry season, uh, it's all for the people to use it. Yeah. So share the space with flood, share the space with water. Now that's the wisdom. All the data, uh, 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 area people understand that. Yeah, understand that. But we totally forget that. We build a high wall to protect the city from being flooded. Now the second rule, the second idea about it to create deep form is to go back to productivity. China, in the past 40 years, 10% of very fertile land has been taken over by urbanization. So it's here. Yes, we, we used to, Mexican city used to have a most productive basin uh, in the world, I would say. Now it's all covered by, by, by building, by, by, by concrete. But uh, at the same time, when you look at the city, some space, in, in China, 30% of the space is, should be public space. And so space, can be go back to productivity again, can produce food again. Now this is an example I tried in 2000, uh, 2002 and built in 2003, again, to turn a campus into a rice paddy campus. The school have no money you know, at that time, and they wanted the, 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 the campus to be beautiful, and also wanted to build as soon as possible, because uh, it's a new, it's a school just uh, relocated. Uh, so it needed only, they wanted the school to be built in six months. So how can build a campus in six months without budget? Collect stone water. Water is free. Uh, stone water is free, collected, and irrigate the field, and turns the field to become a productive farm. This was when I visited the site three months ago, and uh, this come out three months later, you will see, become a wheat field, uh, a, a rice paddies, rice paddies today, you can see, and the farmers even come here for sheep, for sheep, for goats, for goats, students, teachers, uh, as a, a farm, basically, but it's a campus, productive campus, produce rice, for the, for the restaurant, for the school. And the students study under the tree, in the field, in the rice paddy. Yeah? Look at the professor, you can see it, but he's so happy. Yeah? <laughs> because he walk above the rice paddies, uh, across the, the field, from the library to the classroom. And even the local farmers come here to enjoy the agricultural landscape. And students are involved in all this process. Now that's a cultural process, product producing food. At the same time, you, you understand the cycle of nature. You understand there's a different time, when you will plant, when you will harvest. Now that's a culture, to, to come back to this culture. For, for students, it's really a celebration. And the patches of rice can stay here for over the, during the winter time. Because when, when I was a farmer, my, 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 my father told me that when you harvest the rice paddy, you should not cut them off. You should keep patches. 
have patches in the field. Because uh, if you cut them out, the rats, the mice, will go to your home. Right? If you keep rats in the field, the, 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 the mice will stay in the field eating rice. And then the ego, the ego, the bird will, will see it and take away. Right? But if the mice go to your home, they eat all your grains. Yeah. So that's ecology. A deep ecology create deep form. And, and they produce rice. Imagine the campus produce rice for their restaurant. Then I explain this is an example. Replicate example across the, uh, at an even larger scale, at an urban scale. Uh, this is a site, a new, it is a periphery of urban, uh, of the city, and that's a more than one square kilometer size as a river, a river bank. You can see. Uh, we remove the concrete, of course, and it covers as a alluvial, productive alluvial landscape and transform this kind of landscape into a farm. Uh, this farm is productive and it is, it's uh, rotating year round. And certainly this farm is artfully designed. You can see it's still farm. It's still farm, but the people will uh, use this space for recreation, for party, for gathering, and it can be flooded. And your flood will take the nutrients and fertilize the land. That's a, that's a field, as a space for party, for people to take a, you know, to take rest, a float, floating above the monsoon climate so if, it, if it is flooded. Yeah. That was a full process, that's after. Yeah. You can see people use it uh, every day. Thousands of people come to the, to, the, to the farm, and the real estate, the real estate doubled. Because of this farm, you can see rotating, seasonal change. Thousands of people, 20,000 people come to the park every day. Uh, you can see it's productive and it becomes a catalyst for urban development. So really the developer will love this kind of place because it attracts people, people love it, it's productive and a place for recreational use, of course. Yoga, yeah. There are many yoga teams in this urban park. The third principle or third uh, example is to recycle and to use the ordinary uh, cultural heritage. In the past uh, 40 years, hundreds of millions of square meters of buildings have been wiped out, you know, destroyed, including this kind of industrial site. Now, this is my first project back to China. It's an old shipyard. It was uh, dirty. It was, you know, no one wanted this place. And the city tried to remove it. Uh, to relocate it. So then I said, no, wait a minute. We have to design first. To design the park before the, the site had been wiped out. So we go to the site to identify these structures to keep them on site and to transform it, transform it into a beautiful uh, landscape, a park, uh, uh, an art mu a museum here, so that we can ecologically also recover the waterfront as a railroad, as a, uh, as a structures, as a dock for the, for the ship. It was after, yeah. As ecologically, carefully designed, make it a, a sponge, again, a sponge. It's resilient, uh, resilient water flood, as I was before, and this after. You can see, look at, right? there's, a, there's no building here. There's some building over there, but, but after it was built, after this little, uh, only 10 square, uh, only 10 hectare shipyard was transformed, suddenly become an attraction of all the investment. Sheridan, even, even Sheridan come, five-star hotel. So several five-star hotel come to this area, since it becomes the most expensive uh, apartment building in the whole city. Yeah. And again, stormwater management, waterfront, 
remove all the concrete, and then they use the recycle this uh, structure, and they decide to become a wedding place. 20, uh, uh, 2,500 couples of weddings uh, are happening here. Uh, in China, to become a, a cultural uh, and also certainly uh, ecologically interesting. And all these become messy in nature. And but this messy in nature define a new aesthetics uh, back in the city. You see, under the wedding, a new kind of aesthetics, not as little feet anymore, it's a big feet. Yeah? Gens, native species, low maintenance, high performance. Yeah? Wedding again, the structure come back. And, and of, of course, there's a story, the memory. Keeps the memory of the site. It's a red culture in China in 1950, 1960, and 70s, where we really claim this culture. This kind of culture gives memory yeah? to create this entrance, a gate, a gateway entrance, red color, tells a red story of the past, uh, past years. Fairly short history, but still you have to keep it, remember it. You know, compared to 5,000 years history of ancient time, this 50 year, 30 year uh, is also important. We have to remember it. Uh, that's a, a gateway. Uh, look at the color, the very Chinese. Uh, but the reflect here, it looks the same color, the same color. <laughs> yeah. And number four, principle number four, how to create deep form, is to minimize intervention, to maximize output. Today, we engineer use a maximize uh, operation. You know, this concrete, the steel, this uh, bulldozing, and all the factories, uh, all these uh, uh, engineering solutions to create, to channelize all the rivers. Now, that's, that's, that's too much. Not too much. Why don't we just make minimum? Yeah? Nature. Let nature stay. Let nature. Very little intervention. Even the native, all wild native grass, messy nature. But just only one bench, human intervention, a bench, red bench, totally transforms the landscape. Nothing else. Yeah, just one bench for seating, for lighting, and it can be built overnight. Simple. Huh? It can be very simple. Very little. And all the trees, all the shrubs are here. You see, the messy nature suddenly becomes ordered become beautiful, become attractive, uh, attractive. See, look at the whole village come, come here. It's three ladies here, and uh, that's in the morning, and in the night, they're still here. <laughs> yeah, so, so beauty don't have to be big, don't have to be expensive, right? Little transformation uh, create max, well, maximize transformation, is it? That's a little bench, a little, Little ribbon transforms the whole image. And it was before and after. Uh, a band. Before and after. Always you can see hundreds, thousand people just use this bench. The bench, by the way, is 500 meters long. Uh, as it was before ability for the after. Before and after. So minimize intervention. To maximize the, the, the benefit, the surfaces, you see, in the winter, in the winter. The fifth, the fifth strategy or the fifth principle is a growth porous, sponge city, create a sponge, to manage water, to create a water resilient city. That's Delta area, Pearl River Delta area. It was a marsh before people occupied this area. But we have somehow developed this space by cut and fill, create a porous, sponge-like pond and dike system, so that this place be, will be, can become a livable, inha uh, inhabitable. And this will be a solution for today's problem. Yeah? This is a central park in North China's uh, Chengmi city, as it was before. So my solution will be cut and fill. Very simple. Inspired by ancient wisdom. Just cut and fill. And don't have to even build the whole park. 
we just do the periphery, minimize, and create a filtrator, a spongy filtrator, allow the storm water to go into the park, and the park will be functioning as a filtration system. You know, dirty water become clean water, and then we charge the aquifer, become uh, that's we charge the aquifer. This is a scale you can see. So how density you can see density occupied, but this park become a sponge park, right? Underneath a cut field create a sponge system, and use one machine only, only one machine to cut and fill, to cut and fill, cut and fill, and uh, and just today, I see is spongy, willows grow naturally. And here is the, 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 the trees on the top of the mound, and people walk along here can, uh, on the platform. That's as that was built in 2011, and that's today. It was before and this after. Right in the middle of the city, we have this water regulating sponge system. And the catalyst, you see, it was 2011. Little happened. And 2014, in just three years, this spot become a catalyst for urban development. The so real estate value, the so property value double, as I mentioned. Yeah. And that's the process, simple filtrating system, a green uh, sponge right in the middle of the city. Biodiversity increase, uh, species, birds come, uh, come into the city. And so as people here. Yeah. And bird watching. Bird watching, pavilion, a little touch, storm pavilion, bamboo pavilion, wood pavilion. Now that's human being minimum architecture, but create uh, create uh, a vast experience of the of the sponge. And the sponge can be at your backyard. So this is uh, the smallest sponge garden I did in France, uh, in France, uh, to test how this can happen in other culture. Because today climate change, uh, climate change also caused flood. It used to be very mild climate in Europe. The flood also happened in Europe today. So that created a cut and a fill, create a palm, a sponge palm, and a filtrating system. Yeah? Filtrating through this gravel, so the vegetation, and create a clean palm that reflecting the sky and become an art installation uh, here, become a, a fashion show place, uh, a fashion show in France. Very simple, again, the Chinese bamboo and the uh, winding paths. Yeah. And soil, and that's a big problem is the soil. Our soil is polluted, the urban area. We call it brown field. Now, brown field can, can be very expensive to treat, like in America, if you treat a brown field, it is very expensive. Uh, very, you have to change the soil. But why consider this idea of sponge again? Collect the water. So water can filtrate. Particularly this alkaline soil. So water is acid. And uh, it develops this idea to collect stone water and uh, mix with the, with the soil. And the soil will be uh, uh, habitable as was before. And this is after. Yeah? Pound system. Yeah? It was after. Pound system. You create habitat right in the middle of the city with minimal expense. Uh, use nature. Nature take over. But people love it. Uh, people love it because you put people right in the middle of the city. Uh, uh, in, in the middle of the uh, nature. And the nature in the city. Look, look at how the biodiversity increase. Uh, is it just uh, uh, five, six years? How the soil, the quality of soil, also been transformed and changed? What about water pollution? I mentioned at the beginning, seventy-five percent of water is polluted. If all the water goes to the sewage plant, it will be very expensive and even incapable to treat this kind of water. This a lake, you know, is a lake in China. That's the same in, in, this in Yunnan. Yunnan is the same altitude, same elevation, like uh, Mexican city. There's no, no way to save the problem. Uh, 
So the, the solution, again, we invented this uh, uh, nature-based solution based on uh, the uh, agricultural process, agricultural process. That's Shanghai. The river is heavily polluted. The soil is polluted also. Uh, so learn from the agriculture. Learn from the, the, the ancient wisdom to let water run through a terraces, a system terrace to filtrate the polluted water and to turn the dirty water into clean water, into very clean water. Now that's how it works. Cascade wall create oxygen in the water, and the water will then become fertilizer, and vegetation will come up, yeah? covered by all this vegetation. And that was before and this process, cultivating the land, and that recover. And these all become filtrator. You see terraces, that's this process, and the one vegetated. Now that's the whole process, or let water run through it. As a, after, yeah, that's the process of filtrating system. And after one month, the water comes out crystal clean. You can see crystal clean, and this water is swimmable. So one hectare of this constructed wetland can clean eight eight hundred cubic meter of water. Yeah. So that's a nature based solution. Yeah. That's uh, my students' a test of the site. You can see total phosphorus. 85% cleaned, cleaned up. Yeah. And it's a process of harvesting. It's an agricultural process. And it's productive. Yeah. So producti productivity and uh, pollution uh, cleansing can be happening at the same time as different crops and biodiversity at the same time. As soon as you have biomass, you will create all kinds of species of biodiversity. Come back to the city. And of course, it should be designed artfully, recycling of the steel, creating an artifact, weeds, as the reeds can be beautiful, integrated, but, and they also massive, you know, messy nature, flower, metal come into the city. People just love it. Now this test, this experiment can be replicable at large scale. This is even larger scale in Hainan Island. Similar climate to here. Polluted river, been channelized, all this, you know, for 20 years. People don't know how to do it. Because it's densely populated, you see? The densely populated. All the river been concrete, right? channelized, channelized. So our solution is to be create an ecological infrastructure, the green infrastructure, to remove all the concrete and terracing the bank to become filtrated, to become a constructed one line, and let water filtrating through all these green infrastructure. That's literally happened, you see, how the concrete will be removed, removed. And the bank will be transformed into terrace as a terrace. Just take one year. Uh, transform, remove all the concrete, you see, as a process. Uh, as built, uh, built. So, this is a huge scale water remediation project, but at the same time, it becomes a public park, a green corridor. You can see uh, a green corridor. This is a future system, terraces, is a public, public park. Uh, certainly, we have a test to show that it's public health, it's, it's okay for the public health, uh, it's not intoxicated. Yeah. Only sewage, only, only polluted, uh, nutrient rich water. Uh, so, this is a concrete, recycles the concrete, become islands. You know, we recycle the concrete and turn them into islands. And the island become a buffer between water become underlying. Uh, you can see also how the water being cleans uh, the process. Public park. And it can be beautiful. It can be beautiful. And, and we test it also, measuring how you can see how the uh, nitrogen, the nutrients, can be removed back about 85%. Uh, 
the water can basically decrease by the whole process. And the whole river can be built like that. So this is a transformation of the whole river. Yeah? It was before 1970s. After 1980s, the river being channelized, concrete. This is what we propose. Keep all the trees, remove the concrete, integrate it with the recreational facilities, and integrate the whole urban design, urban urbanism. It's the revitalization, the renewal of urban the city. Yeah. So ecology, urban renewal, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the cleansing of water all together. Yeah. It was before, so after. You see, all facilities are, are, are creating oxygen, catching water. As it was before, as it was, as it was after. Yeah. Before, after. Yeah. But always integrate with design. Yeah. And now you have uh, 7,000 uh, architectural students. We have to have a job, right? <laughs> design, make it beautiful. Uh, but always integrate with ecology. Uh, is, and the, the whole city can be transformed. If the river can be done, the whole city can be done. We have such massive problem here. Yeah? The river runs through the city, little space, and one line upstream, a dump in the city, storm water. We need to create a whole green infrastructure. Remove the concrete, create daylight in this uh, tributary, create a green infrastructure, one land introduced, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a stormwater garden at your backyard on the roof. We create a whole system. Now, this system cannot be, should not be expensive because it's just a recovery of nature, as was before, and this after. It was before. And this after, as after. Uh, and now we have other parts in other parts of the world, like this, this in Russia, uh, uh, Lake Kaban, uh, in Tatarstan, Kaban, uh, uh, Kazan city. This is a Kaban Lake, a huge lake, polluted, heavily polluted. And the waterfront is just there, uh, no activities. Uh, this was before, this is rendering. Sponge, sponge system, as after the build. 50,000 people every day use it during the summer. 50,000 people you can see. It's how packed. Huh? A packed water flow. You can see it's terraces, fuel treating water. So when you clean the water, you actually create public space at the same time. You see how people love it. Huh? Just huh? packed with people. It's a recovery of waterfront. Uh, so people always worry, okay, uh, investment, ecology, come on, <laughs> but it's an economy. So it is an economy. Finally, I will give you one smaller case, it's a little case, to show you that even in densely populated area, like in Mexican city, you can always start with your home. Start with uh, your own balcony. As I mentioned, 50 billion meters, square meters of uh, 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 buildings in China, uh, but none of them are energy efficient, uh, are water resilient. None of them. Yeah. So we have to solve the problem. Architects should solve the problem. Yeah. So I collect. This is my own apartment. It's a normal apartment. Uh, so, but I bought the, the top, the roof, the fifth floor and the fourth floor. Uh, it's a loft. So I collect storm water, transform the, the apartment by collecting storm water and energy, and it turns the balcony into a vegetable, vegetable garden. And also I turn the wall into a little green wall, a uh, sponge wall, and it cycles the storm water in the building. In the building. That's my balcony, productive balcony. Uh, every, every other day I will have a, a, a plate of Vegetable come from this balcony. There's another garden, another balcony. Storm water collected, stored here, and recycled, reused as my own bedroom. Gardenians is a flower, suburban flower, as my, uh, my living room. Uh, the living room is with a wall, this wall recycles the storm water and uh, cool off the, 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 the temperature during summer. In Beijing, it's very hot during the summer, 
and your winter is very dry. So this wall will function as a climate remediator. Remediator. Now, how it grows, you see. 2010, 13, 14. Little maintenance, only use storm water. Only cycles of storm water. This is today. Uh, that's today. Yeah. After 10 years. Yeah. And not only is it cool off the building, or little is a climate, it also emitted a, a, a gas, a gas called a dual smell. Now, this dual smell is a cure for depression. For depression, a cure, a smell, <coughs> like rock, like, uh, like soil. And it becomes a learning classroom for community for people, community members. They come here to visit and learn about how uh, every home can be transformed into green sponge room. Uh, 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 regulator of temperature and collect storm water. So it's a small solution. But if, if every family, every apartment will function as a green home, you can collect at least, at least 30% of storm water of the city huh? during the monsoon season. So there will be no flood. There will be no flood. Because you can as a, as a community garden, as a park, as a street, can collect another 30% of storm water. Huh? So the city itself will become a sponge, uh, a soil, of the problem. So to conclude, right, facing the unprecedented, precedentally massive scale and the understandable transformation of the Earth, unsustainable transformation of the Earth, and the de uh, devastating and ecological degradation, obviously, the side effect of industrialization and urbanization, we need to revolutionize our approach to, come to reconfigurate the relationship between nature and development. Heal and transform the degraded environment is a big food revolution. The nature-based solution inspired an ancient wisdom to create deep connection and deep forms. Small-scale project but have big vision, national scale, global scale, right? So that we can create a safe planet, a hero planet. Thank you, uh, thank you. So as I say, I call the, I call the thing like a king, a, a, a big vision, you know, the nation, the, the territory, uh, but uh, act like a person, very simple. Or a person, and a person do it. A thousand years ago, uh, it's not so difficult. Yeah. So this I call design ecologies. It's design ecologies. It's a it's a uh, it's man-made ecology. But at the same time, we, we need to convince the leadership, the authority, the president, uh, the mayors, the minister, to take the decision to make it to, to, to develop such a changing policy. And we just better use very simple technique. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you.